Dr. Yu here with the next video from the Calgary Guide video series, COPD Clinical Findings. This is part of the COPD series of Calgary Guide videos, and you can check out other COPD topics by clicking on the card in the top right corner or in the Calgary Guide video series playlist. Again, please help us reach more viewers by liking the video just as it's starting out and by subscribing to my channel. With that, let's get started. So chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, COPD, posits its clinical findings via three main mechanisms. Number one is lung tissue damage. Number two, via airflow obstruction. And number three, via increased mucus production. Let's talk about lung tissue damage first. The lung tissue damage caused by COPD reduces the elastic recoil ability of lung tissue, which reduces the lung's ability to push air out on expiration. As a result, the total expiration time takes longer than normal, which can be observed as a prolonged expiratory phase, and the lungs don't fully empty, resulting in air being trapped inside the alveoli, otherwise known as lung hyperinflation. Lung hyperinflation can also be seen on chest x-ray. Increased lung volumes means the diaphragm is tonically contracted and it's flatter than usual. And because the diaphragm can't flatten much further to generate deeper breaths, the patient's breaths are rapid and shallow. To breathe, the chest wall must expand out a bit more, giving patients a barrel chest appearance. If the patient is end stage, then the diaphragm will be flat, and continued inspiration further contracts the diaphragm, which pulls the lower chest wall inwards, resulting in a Hoover sign, which is a paradoxical shrinking of the lower chest during inspiration. Going back to lung hyperinflation, because the lungs don't fully empty, more effort is needed to ventilate the larger lungs, resulting in dyspnea, the shortness of breath, especially on exertion. Lung tissue damage also affects the airways. If the damage occurs around the airways, that contributes to airflow obstruction. In terms of airflow obstruction, that's the second main pathophysiological consequence of COPD. Because of airflow obstruction, during expiration, positive pleural pressure will squeeze on the airways and worsen the airflow obstruction. As a result, the respiratory muscles must work harder to breathe, giving the patient a sensation of dyspnea, or shortness of breath. Also, turbulent airflow in narrower airways can be audible on auscultation, especially on expiration, which gives COPD patients their classic expiratory wheeze. Airflow obstruction also reduces ventilation of the alveoli, which reduces oxygenation of the blood and reduces the ability of the blood to perfuse body tissues like the brain and muscle with necessary oxygen. This results in COPD patients having fatigue and reduced exercise tolerance. And finally, if the COPD patient is end stage, airflow obstruction also causes several classic signs. First, COPD patients will try to compensate for airflow obstruction by increasing the air pressure inside their mouths, which forces the airways to open wider. They do this through a method called pursed lip breathing, and that's a sign that's visible in end stage COPD patients. Secondly, the chronic fatigue associated with COPD will cause deconditioning, resulting in muscle weakness and muscle wasting. Finally, the patient will breathe with accessory muscles, as well as a diaphragm, to try to improve airflow. That results in them sitting in, in what's called a tripod position, which allows them to activate their pec muscles to generate greater inspiratory effort. And you will be able to see COPD patients with neck muscles contracted such as the sternocleidomastoid or the scalene muscles, for the similar reason of trying to further increase ventilation effort. Finally, COPD results in increased mucus production in the airways, which further contributes to airflow obstruction. In addition, because the chronic inflammation associated with COPD has reduced the number of epithelial ciliated cells that normally function to clear away the mucus, the mucus is allowed to build up inside the airways of COPD patients. Ultimately, the patient needs to clear the mucus resulting in chronic cough with sputum production. And that's all for our Calgary Guide slide on COPD clinical findings. For more on COPD, you can check out the following videos, such as an overview of the definition of COPD, as well as the pathogenesis of COPD. Again, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next video.